fire. Kyle said bookmark that tweet because it could, again, help us out uh, in good and bad later in life. Our insider is also reporting that Mike Tomlin reached out to Russell Wilson to let him know that Russ will be the starter to start. And Fields, of course, will compete. So that's the report in mid-March. What do we expect, as Kyle just mentioned, as the offseason goes on and we're talking about the Steelers' quarterback room? Peter, how do you see this situation unfolding personality-wise and football-wise. Yeah, it's interesting with the Steelers because now you have this thing, and I went on and on in the opening segment about how fiscally sound it is. No one's ever won a Super Bowl based on being fiscally sound. <laughs> Necessarily, like, you don't get banners for just being cost-effective. In this case, though, here's the dynamic I see. Russ, who has already been told, you're coming in as number one. Russ gets to revive his career. Okay, here's an mm -hmm. opportunity. Go write this chapter however you want it. It's, it was going in a Hall of Fame direction. Now that might be up in the air based on the last two years in Denver. Go and rewrite this thing and make yourself in that conversation once again and maybe even go get that Super Bowl ring. That is the Russ situation. It's one year, $1.2 million. The ball is yours. Go do your thing. Mm -hmm. The field situation is interesting because if you're the Steelers on this one, it's like, all right, we're not going to have a top 10 pick. We're never going to have a top 10 pick. We're 9-8 and eight every year. We're 10-7 and seven every year. We're never going to be that team. The last time we drafted a quarterback in the first round, we drafted him 20th overall, and he wasn't necessarily a blue-chip prospect. He was the best of that class, but what did that even mean? That was a class that wasn't a quarterback year. In Justin Fields, you get a look under the hood for one year to notice and to acknowledge whether this is your guy moving forward. He might not take a snap this year. Maybe it's all Russell. But you'll know from practice. You'll know from his familiarity with the, with the playbook. You'll know from his being a part of the team whether this is a guy you want to commit long term to. There's a chance that Russell plays the entire season and Russell's let walk out the door and Justin Fields is given a huge massive extension because, okay, for that year we mm. saw Justin Fields and how he progressed in the building and that was the dude that we want to ride with. It's a great two-car parallel path move that they're doing here. Do I think either quarterback is a top 10 or 15 quarterback in the league right now? I don't know. Mm. I, 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 Russ on a best day, yes. Fields on his best day, maybe. So is that winning you the AFC? Not necessarily. And I've gotten a lot of people pushing back on me from my comments earlier in the show being like, that was such a brilliant move by the GM. It's a brilliant move. And they're like, you got the 23rd and 26th best quarterbacks in the league. <laughs> like, great. What are you going to do when you play against the Chiefs and the Ravens? I understand. But to make these moves, you set yourself up for the, for the near future and you set yourself up for the long term. By the end of this season, you'll know if you want one, two, or neither of these guys, and there's no financial commitments beyond that. I look at it, and to your point, all the reports say, all right, it's Russell Wilson's job. Some reports said, hey, they were looking to even commit to Russ beyond just this season. I'm not so sure that it's Russ's job. I think to that point, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Russell Wilson is a veteran. He's going to start out getting the first team reps. I'm more curious. We talked about it when Russ first signed. It's like, all right, going into training camp, this is a place I want to be because the Steelers are going to play their starters in the preseason. We watched it last year with Kenny Pickett and those guys going out competing in every single game. What if they go out there and Fields is just magnificent? What if they get out there on the practice field throughout training camp and Russ start, struggles a little bit and Fields just looks phenomenal in an Arthur Smith offense where maybe he feels a little bit more comfortable? I look at this as a true competition where like the it. veteran gets the first shake at it because he's the proven guy. Russ has done it. I said it earlier. He's won a Super Bowl in Seattle. But then the last two years in Denver, the first year didn't go it went atrocious. It wasn't as planned. They thought that they had Super Bowl aspirations, and it just was not good. Last year, Russ was much improved under Sean Payton, but still, it led him to be cut from the Denver Broncos. So now he's brought over to Pittsburgh. And to your point, yes, revive his career, get back on track. But if I'm Justin Fields, I chose Pittsburgh because I felt there was an opportunity for me to go out there and compete and get a chance to play right now. If it is true that there were other suitors and Justin Fields didn't want to go, it's probably because he was going to be identified as the backup with no chance to move ahead of that. I look at this. He pointed out to the Steelers and said, you know what, I want to go there because he saw an opportunity in the future, but I think he also saw an opportunity in right now because if Justin Fields doesn't perform, there is no future. He's going into the last year of his deal because the Steelers aren't going to pick up his fifth-year option, I would assume. So this is an opportunity for him to go out there and showcase and say, you know what, love and respect Russ. Said I wanted to model my game after him when I was in college, but this is a chance for me to go compete. The irony is that in 2013, the Seattle Seahawks were this young team. They had all 
these young players, and they had Matt Flynn, the late Travaris Jackson, and then they drafted Russell Wilson in the third yeah. round, which felt like a strange pick at the time because they had these two quarterbacks. They just paid Matt Flynn a ton of money, mm. and all Russell did was go and just kick ass throughout training yeah. camp and win the job and made it so undeniable that everyone was like, all right, Russell's gotcha. our number one. There's no doubt about it. And in this case... Justin Fields can do exactly the same thing like with Russell that. Wilson, where, yes, you were told you're the number one, but it's undeniable after an entire August that I'm the guy and I can run this offense better than even you. I was on the Titans when we played Seattle in the preseason up in Seattle, and Russ comes in the game, and he runs all over the place making throws. And to your point, it led to that, and it's going to be exciting to see. Kyle, what are your thoughts on whether it's Fields, yeah. Russ, and their situation right. in that quarterback room? Peter, I don't know why people on Twitter are giving you crap about the 23rd and 26th quarterbacks in the league. Russ just tweeted, QB room about to be fire. So I don't know if they didn't see that tweet, like, but they're ready to roll here, guys. And Jason, you got me, you got me excited. Uh, it, here's the tweet that we saw. Russ has it in writing that the QB room is indeed about to be fire. So take that, Twitter. But I'm already looking forward to training camp, Jay. I know I say this all the time. I, I go to Bears training camp every year. You stand there and you watch Justin Fields, and he's a supermodel. He's so big and so fast, you can't take your eyes off him. He is uh, charismatic in the practice field. The players like him. He's doing the dances. He's doing the, the celebrations with his teammates. Like, he, he's great, and he's a really impressive training camp player. He's got a lot of different things going on with Russ. I also just think the personality match between the two of these is really interesting. Back to the tweet. So, all right, Russ tweets that. He doesn't text Fields. He tweets, that's fine. It's an okay thing to do. Justin Fields doesn't reply because Justin Fields like doesn't tweet. Look at Justin Fields' Twitter over the last year. I think there's four tweets. And one of them ad, ad, ends in a hashtag ad. One of them says, come meet me at the Verizon store, Bears fans. And then like one of them is about uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year. There's no public Justin Fields. There's no image. There's no none of that. He shuts up. He comes to work. He never says anything. And he just gets the job done as best as he can on the practice field for sure. So these two are really different. This is a big time celebrity quarterback, and this is a guy who is trying to reforge his career and prove that the Bears were wrong. The stakes are really high. Russell Wilson, if he gets a start, is about three bad throws from being on his fourth team in four years, and he'll be a backup on that team. So they each need something. They're both totally cut from a different cloth in terms of their personality. I, I, I'm ready for this thing. I think you're right, Jason. Tomlin loves Russ. Wait till Justin Fields puts on that number one Steelers practice jersey and starts running around and impressing the teammates. I don't think it's that simple.